Hello guys, long time uh, since I've done a video. Um, I'm going to talk about today about my capture of Sharpless 261 Lowers Nebula. Now I caught the data in December and January of well 23 and 24. We've had such poor weather. My name's Rob and this is Seven Skies Astro. First of all, thank you very much for tuning in. If you're new to this channel, please consider giving me a subscription and if you give it a, a little like and a thumbs up and hit the bell, that would be fantastic because it really does help with the, the YouTube algorithms. Today I'm going to talk about my capture of Lowers Nebula. Now I caught this data in December and January this year over two notes. Now, because I've, I've had to do it over two nights because of where Orion was and it tends to go over the sky and then into the, the bright London lights so and we've got also got trees and neighbours and stuff so I can generally only get like four hours uh, per night on this object so I do that I get like four hours and then move on to another target that goes in my window of opportunity from where I am now I was using my uh, Skywatcher 72 ED with the uh, usual narrowband filters, uh, hydrogen alpha, sulfur 2 and oxygen 3. The oxygen 3 is only 3 nanometers and the hydrogen is 6 and the sulfur 2 is 7 nanometers. So I say this, this Lowe's Nebula was discovered by uh, Charles and Harold Lowe in 1939. They were amateur astronomers that, and telescope makers that made their own Smith camera, F1 Smith camera, and they used red sensitive photographic film and red filter and started photographing the sky, and that's where they discovered the target, Sharpless 261. So that's what I've done. I will pop on the computer and show you data. Now, this. this just remember this target is extremely faint. I believe it's magnitude 10 but it's like, like twice the size of the full moon so it's really over a, a large area but it's very very faint. So I'm going to pop on the computer and show you what I've got. Right here is me individual subs. HA which is two hours and 55 minutes that's all just 35 for five minutes subs oxygen three there's not a lot of oxygen three in there at all that's just two hours and 20 minutes because the, the, the weather's been so poor two hours 20 minutes and me sulfur it's a little bit better a lot of detail, a bit more detail there. Sulfur, which is uh, two hours and five minutes. So overall, seven, just just over seven hours worth of data, which is um, not a lot. I've combined them to make this the colour image. Now you can see there's quite a nasty little gradient going along there from top from bottom to the top, whichever way you want to describe it. It's very green there. Uh, so I've used a gradient correction tool. Uh, that's pretty much the new one out um, from Pixinsight. There's some videos out on that, I haven't done one. I've pretty much just used it as is and it's done a half decent job on that as you can see next up I've got onto Blair Exterminator and just basically what you usually do with Blair Exterminator just sharpens any chromatic aberration with using the, the 72 ED then I've colour corrected it I've uh, I took, put a preview on 
for the background and then you used it's best to craft a color correction tool i've got two settings there i've got one here if i'm using narrow band to put my wavelengths in from my filters and there's what if i'm just using a, a one shot color it just saves putting it in manually every time so i've, I've done that and next up i've taken the stars out just give me that it's still still very green so i've hit it with screen to take the the green out of it and i didn't take all of it i, I believe it run at about 70 percent then i've just stretched it using a um, he stretch on link which is this one the pixel math from bill blanchin um that i just find it just easier sometimes i'm also a little bit lazy so it depends on the object i, I can use the ghs and i think believe that did use it later on in this so i've done that i've, I've stretched it which goes, goes white take the stretch off and there it is it's still still a bit green but i've used noise exterminator there next i tend to like to use it before if i'm using noise exterminator before then i'll use generalized hyperbolic stretch to stretch it i think it stretches a little bit better and you'll get artifacts that way so there is the it's been noise exterminated i think about say 70 percent maybe 80 percent next up i go i get the histogram up and i just pull the black point up a bit so just just makes it easier for me to work with next up i went i actually went on to generalize hyperbolic stretch and started pulling up a little bit of the color a little bit of the saturation not much a little bit of saturation a little bit of the the, the darker the fainter the velocity in the background there and then it's a matter of curves now generally just curves work i'm just trying to get the uh, highlighted a few bits and say you can pick on where you want it to do say here for instance so you can see what what colors are in there you can just drag it off and whatnot so that's what I've, I've done there it's just generally curves curves now i think i took the green out because as you see if you look there you can see it's going very very green because i left i didn't take all the green out first hand and then i put a uh, first mask on which was the the range mask i just made a general range mask like that because i didn't want to i just wanted to work on the nebula bit and dark and not so the background doesn't get all noisy too much noise and again more curves and then i used another mask this one here to highlight all the edges the outside and leave the inside that way you can see that it's just bringing up that faintness but and it's also given a slight tunnel effect and then i've gone on to a i made another mask say there's the it's just highlighting that i made another mask later on and just just basically curves where just highlighting the curves a little bit of saturation i think now i put on a, another mask which is this one and that is just the blue that was in it and you've seen the the o3 data there wasn't a lot in there at all very little so i just made a little bit of a blue mask and just highlight that center region there and just brought it off a little bit with saturation and then more curves work in general same again just highlighting it bringing it up making trying to make it a little bit of a of a hole like a donut effect and I, then I, at the end of it I've, I've used the advanced sharpen tool and if you can see that it's all all this curves work and that is blurring it a little bit so i'll go on the script 
utilities and advanced sharpening which is that one and i'll just leave everything as is then hit it with it and you can see it just brings that out quite nicely next up i worked on the stars there's nothing special about the stars i just after extracting them i've use generalized hyperbolic stretch i use it in a linear first and brought it sorry arc sign first and brought them right up if you look here you can see they just they, i've just added them brought them right off no messing about arc sign so it keeps the color in and then just 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 tie and think oh where do i want them you know rather than using star reducer and stuff i just where would i like them to be and that's that's basically it there's nothing overly complicated about the zoom stars next up i've jumped onto um i've added the stars back again which has given me this and it does makes it does seem to me to make a a nice difference when the stars are back in so again when i've got the, the stars in i've had i've hit a little bit with noise exterminator because you can see a little bit of salt and pepperish with with adding the stars back in and I just took that little tiny bit out, so just a little bit, not too much. It's still a little bit of green in there, but it's not not too not too bad. So I've inverted it, and then because you invert, you can see see all these green. That's creating magenta in the reversed inverted image. So I hit it with the screen and take that out, and then inverted it back. Now it does offset it a little bit but it tends to make the stars a little bit more nicer and then i've hit it with the screen again just just to get me shoe colors back a little bit better and it's just um i added a, another mask which was this one i've done another mask on it and added it on and just basically highlighted that a little bit better the tunnel effect and it's just a bit, a bit more curves transformation and and uh, that's it i'm quite happy i don't want to over indulge in the colors <clears throat> so for a very faint target step by step i think it's that's a, a fair representation of it i say there's not a lot of data that I, have, I certainly if you're going to do a target like this with so little O3 and you you definitely need oh you're talking you need at least six hours of per per filter which you give at least 18 hours worth but all things considered from bottle seven i'm quite happy with it and it is quite a big target so yeah there it is it's i'm, I'm reasonably pleased with that Well, there we have it. I'm reasonably pleased with it, to be honest. But any imaging time I've, I've been able to get, I've been, I've been out, and it's just been so poor here in the UK. Everybody's struggling for imaging time. But on other news, I have got myself a little another mount, which I'm also going to use in two rigs in future. Now I have got four hours worth of data on another target and um, six hours worth on another target but that other target will be on my next video some galaxies for the change because galaxy season has started but it's been really hard to get the galaxies going and um, because of the weather so i say i'm quite pleased with the lowest nebula that was turned out uh, so thank you once again if you managed to stay this this late this far into the video i thank you very much if you haven't subscribed please consider it it does help me out so give it a like and please comment because i love getting comments and i always always answer them 
Um, and hopefully, with having the two rigs, I can get back onto my F2 conversion because I, I just haven't had the time to do stuff with it. So, and take the imaging. So, hopefully, we'll get onto it and uh, I'll see you in the next one. So, be safe, be well, and clear skies.